So hey guys, make a real quick tutorial and just kind of show you guys another DAW that is an option to do for you guys to do run backing tracks. Um, this this DAW is actually free and it works on either Mac or iPad and um, it's really good. I mainly work in Ableton, but uh, my our stems if you buy the the stem packs, they'll actually work with this with this unit right here and it's free. And uh, I mean, I always prefer Ableton because you can just do a lot more with it. But this thing is pretty cool. And uh, a lot of people, I was making sets in main stage, and I, I still do it if people ask for it. But main stage is just such a dog that it's just, I, I wouldn't recommend it. It's great for running keyboards, but their playback engine is just horrible. And, uh, and if you run a bunch of tracks, it just, it does not work very good. But this thing works great. Um, like I said, I would still go with uh, Ableton, but if if you're on a budget or maybe it's just Ableton's too confusing, this is a really easy DAW right here, and it works great. As you can see, right here you have uh, I have I have 24k Magic loaded in here. It's going to kind of give you a walkthrough of what this DAW does, and then I'll show you how to load music into it. Okay, so this is done by a company called uh, Loop Community, and uh, they mainly do gospel music. They have really good gospel music over there, so you can actually go there and you can, you can buy gospel music right there and it'll load right into this player. They don't have a lot of cover songs. They do have some, uh, but if you you know buy it, you can buy stems from us and load them right to this DAW. But let me just kind of give you a rundown real quick. So if you, <laughs> you have a song in here, and this is after uh, you've already loaded it up, these are basically your volume knobs. So I have, you know, I have volume for a bass, volume for uh, uh, backup vocals and drums, electric guitar, and uh, you know, um, lead vocals, percussion. You have your click and your cue down here. One thing I would say, if you do buy tracks from us, the one thing you want to do is you want to <coughs> you want to click on this little thing right here. Um, general click. That. This it's this one right here. If you have this on right here, this is how it usually comes as default. And what you're going to do is you're going to hear their click. It doesn't match up with some of the stems because some of the stems that we have, they're not exact. They're not totally on the grid uh, because the the tempo changes. And so that, what you want to do is you want to go here and you want to turn this stuff off, boom, and then get rid of that. And then our click will be coming out of here. And you see how that like 24/7 has a. The intro is a slower click, then it goes faster and faster, then it finally gets on the grid where the music starts. Chorus two, three, four. But anyhow, so that's one. That's the first thing you want to do when you get if you if you are going to use this. But this thing works just like Ableton in as, as far as and main stage. As far as you can go through and you can control your your lead vocals or your keys or say if you don't you know you have a lead vocalist you don't need that you turn it off. Um, you know you can also like say we have a bass player. You don't need that. Turn that bass player off. Don't have a drummer. I mean, you have a, you have a drummer, so you don't need that. Turn that off. Now you just have this. So now you have you know guitar and click and cue and uh, keyboards and percussion and backup vocals going. And then um, what you have up here is you have your devices. This would select your sound card. So if I clicked on devices right here, I have a, I'm using my built-in sound card. So uh, I only have two in and outs. If I was to be using a, like a, a four channel, then I would have more outs than that. And how you how you uh, get those out? Say I have a four uh, channel sound card. So you want uh, click to be going out, say channel three and four, and you want um, uh, your instruments to be coming out channel one and two stereo. You go over here and click outs, and then all these things down here switch. And you can see right here, these are going out mono. So if I went like this, I'd click, you know, stereo, 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 in that case. Um, and I'd have these going out one and two, and then I, I would hit this. And you can see how that goes to one, two. If I had more channels on my sound card, it'd go to three, four, you know, or I go stereo and it'd go one, two. If I clicked it again, it'd go three, four. I only have two outs, so that's why it's doing that. But so I'm going to take this back over to mono because I only have two outs. So we're going to leave these on channel 1, that's channel 1, I'm going to have the click coming out channel 2, and that way it's basically split, you know, music's coming out right side, click is coming out left side, that's basically how that would work if you have channel 1 and channel 2. Here's a few more cool features about this, so you have set lists, you can actually create your own set lists, you know, uh, multiple set lists, and you can add songs that you download um, into here, into those set lists which is very convenient because you can actually move those around and say you have a set list one, two, three, four, and so on. 
You can also hook up MIDI controllers. I don't have any MIDI controllers hooked to this right now, but if I did, I would click on this. It would show me the MIDI controllers, and you can actually map these out. So, like, your play button would work with your controller or a MIDI foot switch. Um, that kind of thing. Um, and then as you get more and more songs in here, this is a gospel song that I downloaded off the site when I was first um, experimenting with this track. But I'm going to click on that in a second. I just want to show you. So what's nice too is, so if I'm on Bruno Mars and so I have my volume set, you know, and I have, there we go. So I click back on that. I'll give you your solos and offs. I want keyboards. I want electric bass. I want backup vocals. I want percussion. But I don't want bass, guitar, and that kind of stuff on this song. And then also I set my volumes. But now if I click on the next song, any song you're set, you can see right here, nothing's been set yet. Everything's at top volume. Pretty much everything's on except for a few things I had turned off down here. So now maybe on this song, you know, I want, I just want uh, acoustic guitar. I want backup vocals, uh, tambourine. I don't want lead vocals. I don't want any of these egg shakers. And I don't need drums. I want the synth to and the pad. Um... I, need, I don't need the bass, you know, and I can go through and set all my vocals like that, you know. So now that's all set in. So all I have to do now is what I'm playing. So if I'm playing the song, it's playing. But if I click on the next song, everything went back to exactly how I, how I, how I set it for my last mix. So every time you change a mix on each song, it'll stay just like that. A couple other really cool features. So if I'm on song one here, and um, right here you can have it either go to where it stops. This is, yeah, I'll give you a link to the website too. You can see what all these means. This little emblem means it, it stops, but it still keeps the click going. And that way, um, you know, our click, I believe, will just stop. It won't actually keep generating a click. But if you did have one that generated a click, it would keep that click going. So if you wanted to improvise or whatever, um, this means that the click after it gets in, the end of the song is just going to stop. I'm not quite sure what this emblem means um, or that one, but you can look on the help and the readme. Uh, but this one right here is crossfade. It's really cool. So say you have a song here and you don't want you you want to just have it go right into the next song. You can just maybe fast forward down here. So now if I play the end of that song, it's gonna go with this little emblem, it's gonna go right into into Bruno Mars. It's gonna crossfade into it. Two, three. Here comes Bruno Mars. Intro, two, three, four. So that's a really cool feature. Another cool thing is right here is these are loop markers. So this song uh, came from Loop Community, so they already put these in here for you. But you can actually add them to songs that you that you drop in here on your own, uh, or if you want, if you don't want to go through and, and upload the songs to the to the player, basically you're uploading it to their cloud and then it sucks it into your set list. If you don't want to do that, too time consuming. We're actually going to have a place where we'll do it for you at, at additional fee. It's not much to me like probably three bucks and then if you want to add loop markers you can either do that yourself or if you want us to do it we can actually do it too you know but on certain songs you, you don't need to add loop markers but say um, if you look right here and say like on this little piece right here I'm gonna play it and then I'm gonna hit this little loop marker Outro, here. Two, three. Oh, that one. So I'm gonna hit that so that'll loop this this section so Here it comes. Outro two, three. There, so I looped it one time. You can set how many loops you want it to go, but I just have a loop one time. But you can sit there and just keep looping it over and over. If I want to loop it again, I hit it again and I loop it again. And you can do this with a foot switch, um, or you can do it with a Outro, MIDI controller. Two, and that way, if you're soloing, you want to keep going, or maybe you got a crowd participation thing going on, you can keep going with that, which is really cool. Now to add those, what you do, if I clicked on this song, this is, this is one of our songs that I uploaded, and say uh, right here, I wanted to go ahead and add, you can either add, you know, you can add the verse, chorus, bridge, you can add as many loop markers as you want, but you know, most of the time you're really not going to need that, so I wouldn't really waste my time, I would just, you know, if I want a solo that I want, or maybe the outro that I want to just, you know, be able to loop, so if I want to make it longer, I can, or a breakdown if I want to loop it, 
you know, I want to make it a little longer, I can. So right now we're going we're gonna to pretend this is where the guitar solo section is and say I wanted to loop the guitar solo. Uh, maybe just, so they say it's the guitar solo and this is the, and then this is like the last bar of that guitar solo, the same loop. I would just actually, what I do is you go here and you just click edit song and you click uh, edit markers and then you can zoom in here a little bit and scroll down and say, um, Say right here, this section right here is the guitar solo. So what I'll do is I'm going to add a loop marker right here. And I'm going to call that guitar solo. And boom. And I'm going to click add. And then we come down here and I'm just going to put another marker at the end of that. And, um, and whoops. So yeah, we're going to call that chorus. And then... Now, if I click out, you'll see I have this section right here is guitar solo, and that's chorus. But I didn't really care about this section, so it didn't really matter what I put on there. But if I'm here, I can actually um, click Save, and it'll save that. So now if I'm here playing and uh, playing the song, Two, three, four. and I can click that, and it'll loop it. All right, so that's that's it's pretty cool. So now I'm going to go into the part of the tutorial where I'm going to show you how to uh, upload a track and get it in this player.